Okay. Well, good morning. We are meeting as the Planning, Housing, and Economic Development Committee, and it is Monday, February 18th. We are taking up two items today. The first is expedited bill 5020, landlord tenant relations, fire safety, removal of mercury service regulators. And we have a very helpful packet that Christine Wellens has prepared. We're joined by a number of officials from DHCA. Uh, and we'll, I'll ask uh, Council President and lead sponsor, Tom Hucker, if you'd like to make some comments on the legislation before we begin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is the echo on my end? I don't hear an echo. Oh, okay, good. Well, that's a relief. Um, so uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to everybody for being here. Um, I want to provide a little context about um, the background of this bill and the importance. I, I don't think that we had a long intro. Um, so four and a half years ago, you all know we had this tragic incident at Flower Branch. Um, it took the lives of seven residents, injured at least 30 people, displaced hundreds. Um, We've done a lot in terms of social services for the victims of that tragedy, but we've never addressed the cause. Um, I heard the explosion from over there in my living room and um, spent the whole night there and have continued to follow this issue. It was frustrating. Um, it was really a relief to all of us, I think, when the NTSB took over the investigation, but then they took years with some staff changes to complete the investigation. And the NTSB, once it was completed, determined that the failure of an indoor mercury service regulator contributed to the deadly explosion. Unfortunately, thousands of these mercury regulators still exist. They were installed uh, generally in the 1960s, I believe ending in 1968. They're inadequate, they're outdated, they should have been all replaced and removed uh, quite a while ago. In 2003, Washington Gas committed to replace the mercury regulators in existing buildings within 10 years. The PSC allowed them to collect nearly $2 million from ratepayers to do just that. However, Washington Gas never did the work. And three years later, three well, 13 years after the onset of that order, um, the explosion in Flower Branch needlessly happened. It's completely avoidable and due to Washington Gas not removing those regulators. Um, they've since settled a lawsuit filed by those tenants, um, but we know because of the findings in the NTSB report that there are up to 40,000 dangerous, potentially lethal mercury regulators still operating in the Washington Gas service area, um, and they pose a threat to our residents every day. Um, I met with the new senior leadership of Washington Gas after their merge, well, the old leadership at the time to discuss this issue and the new leadership when um, they took over after the merger. They said then, and they continued to say that they would replace these quickly, um, but in many cases they did not know which properties had them and, and sometimes they lacked access to the properties. So I asked them to meet with the survivors of the Flower Branch tragedy and to their credit the former vice president of washington gas met with them apologized and committed to remove all the regulators they stated that they had already removed them at all the k apartments properties they updated their materials on their website to educate landlords and tenants about what these regulators look like and they encouraged people to come forward and disclose the um, existence of mercury regulators in residential properties um, they started a special dedicated email box to accept that that, that feedback and their leadership continued to uh, assure me that they, if they just could find out uh, and partner with the county to find out where these are, they would replace them. Um, recently, the Maryland Public Service Commission issued an order um, finding that Washington Gas had failed to comply with the plan, fining them, um, and um, uh, confirming that they had failed to follow that program. Um, so we hope that Washington Gas follows through with its commitment to uh, replace those through the PSC order. However, the PSC order gives them a very luxurious three-year timeline um, when obviously they already committed to do this back in 2003. We should not um, wait three years for these all to be um, removed, nor can we, I think, rely on the oversight of just the PSC alone. Washington Gas, when I originally drafted this bill, committed to, um, we drafted it with a 30-day timeline. Um, at their request, we extended it a little bit, um, but I think it's really critical that the county not sit back and wait for the PSC to essentially screw this up again, but rather that we use, we partner with Washington Gas and landlords to use our regulatory authority to 
um, identify where these are and to continue to educate tenants about them and get them removed as quickly as possible. So that's, that's the goal of the bill. Doing so obviously aligns with our racial equity goals, which is outlined in the racial equity statement. Um, it's a very straightforward bill. In 2016, we didn't know the cause of the explosion. Now we do. Now that the report is out, um, we have a responsibility to step up and act and protect our residents and the apartment staff that work in those buildings. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Uh, terrific presentation. I think you really walked through the logic of the bill and the history as well and why it's important. Um, my general feeling about this is once bitten, twice shy. And as you stated, this order came down from the PSC years ago. Compliance was not satisfactory. And so, first of all, I think it's really helpful that you put this bill together. I think you were part of an effort, uh, including our state legislators, that has put the focus on this and has helped spur action at the PSC. And so, you know, we do have more of a solution coming from the PSC, and obviously that alters the context of this legislation, and you've, you know, considered ways to modify it in response. Um, and I think it's still important to follow through on this. And, uh, you know, my general thinking here is to help position the county to look over the shoulder and make sure that this gets done. And uh, as, uh, you know, as we said, not just assuming that it's going to happen. Um, although, you know, we're, we're optimistic that it will, or certainly we expect it, I should say, not that we're optimistic, but, uh, but there is a, you know, an important step that we can take to uh, Im improve the county's understanding of our housing stock and the safety of it, and um, to uh, have a access to information that we can then check in with WS, uh, W Washington Gas and and uh, ensure this is proceeding. Um, okay, Councilmember Jawanda would like to speak, and then uh, we'll go to the packet, and we'll invite uh, our AOBA and, and Washington Gas, our, I know are here, and we'll invite them to also uh, you know, be part of this conversation. Councilmember Jawanda. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Council President Hucker uh, for as the district council member where this tragedy happened, uh, pulling this together and his work on it. Um, and I'm proud to be a co-sponsor. You know, I, I too was there in the aftermath of, of this explosion. Um, and I think as, as many, I know my colleagues know, but and others may know, I grew up literally across the street uh, from where this blew up in Long Branch and in a poorly maintained apartment, you know, 30 years ago. And uh, this really uh, speaks to the price of poverty. Um, you know, while it happened in Long Branch, we know that there are, we now know that there are many of these regulators across the county. It could have happened at any of those places. Um, and I, it's unconscionable that now that we know as part of a tax, as, as part of a rate hike, this is important too. I think Councilman Hucker mentioned the, the history but the 2003 agreement to replace these, Washington Gas presented a plan to state officials saying it would replace all of these 66,000, almost 67,000 regulators, indoor mercury, mercury gas regulators over the next decade. Um, that didn't happen, right? And then, and then, and we saw the devastating consequences in 2016 in the loss of life. Um, you know, they should have been completed by 2013 under that agreement, under that rate hike. We all paid more so that they could do it. They didn't do it and people died. And now they've settled. And that's while that provides some relief to the families, you can't put a price on human life. And so this is a, we have to put as much pressure on as possible. And I'm glad the PSC acted, but it's not quick enough. And we need to work with the landlords to quickly and, and with Washington Gas to quickly identify these regulators and get them out of those buildings and up to, upgraded. So I just wanted to emphasize that point that we paid in in the form of a tax uh, rate hike and the residents, many low income, many people of color, immigrants died because they lived in shabby housing. And that's not 
shouldn't be allowed anywhere. It certainly shouldn't be allowed in Montgomery County. So any cost of this bill, we're going to get into these amendments. Any cost for this bill uh, to landlords, uh, to anybody, to Washington Gas, it's far outweighed by the what we need to do to protect the, the life and safety of our residents. So that's the view I had into these amendments. I really thank Council, Member, Council President Hucker and look forward to getting this passed. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Christine. Uh, thank you. Good morning, council members. Um, so since uh, Council President Hucker provided a comprehensive background to the bill, um, I'll go ahead and uh, try to jump into the issues that were identified in the staff packet. Um, the first issue relates to potential amendments to eliminate landlords' responsibility to determine whether mercury service regulators are present on their properties. Um, as originally drafted, the bill would require um, a landlord to uh, proactively go and check um, a mercury service regulator at the property to see if it is, um, or just to the, the gas regulator to see if it's a mercury service regulator or or if it does not contain uh, mercury. The idea is that um, um, that the determination of whether a regulator has mercury is relatively straightforward, at least from the according to uh, Washington Gas's website. If the regulator is uh, horizontal, it uh, contains mercury or likely contains mercury. If it's vertical, it does not. Um, and so the idea was that the landlord would take a look, see if there appears to be the um, mercury service regulator and then uh, notify tenants as well as contacting Washington Gas to schedule uh, the replacement of the regulator. Um, so the propo uh, a proposed uh, change to this bill uh, from AOBA and, and Washington Gas have provided some suggested amendments jointly, and part of their amendments would um, eliminate that requirement that the landlord go and, and check to see if there's a mercury service regulator. Um, instead, it would be you know left to Washington Gas, as, as they are obligated to do under their the PSC order to do the survey and you know wait for that process to happen to see if there's a mercury service regulator present at a particular property um, and then under their amendments you know the landlord uh, would once the replacement occurs would notify the tenants uh, and then the landlord would also be responsible for notifying DHCA so that DHCA can as Councilmember Reamer um, had mentioned you know maintain a database so that we have the information about the about the mercury service regulators in the county. Um, so that's kind of the first issue um, is, is whether to eliminate the requirement under the bill that the landlords, um, you know, proactively look to see if there's a mercury service regulator. Um, so that could be, you know, accomplished with some pretty straightforward amendments of just deleting lines 18 through 20 and lines 34 through 45. As an alternative, um, AOBA and Washington Gas suggested that um, some text be added to the bill indicating that the landlord would be required to make commercially reasonable efforts to coordinate the replacement of all indoor mercury service regulators on the premises of the rental housing with the gas utility company in an expeditious manner. Um, so that's essentially, you know, the, the issue number one and happy to um, try to answer any questions about that. Okay. Um, well, I have a question and a you know an idea I want to just talk through. Uh, Councilmember Hucker and I have had a chance to you know talk about it a bit, but you know I want to uh, get more feedback. But um, you know, generally speaking, uh, and I know AOBA again, AOBA and Washington Gas are, are with us, and I they invite them to turn on their cameras so they can respond. Um, so. First of all, there's an assertion that it somehow is not easy for the property owner to go do what Washington Gas has already made available generally to all property owners, which is take a, take a photo and email it in. Um, you know, I suppose there may be some buildings where the regulator 
is a little bit more out of reach than other buildings. But I'm not sure about that, actually. I, you know, how hard would it be? Because Washington Gas has to be able to get to them. Um, but in general, uh, I, I wondered if we might not just make it that property owners must go take a picture of the regulator and send it in, uh, rather than relying on the property owner to make a judgment as to whether it is likely a mercury regulator. Um, I get a little worried about the subjectivity involved, and um, it seems to me that it raises a potential question, if we haven't heard from a property owner, then you know we're assuming it's not a mercury regulator. Uh, however, it could also be that that property owner is not doing their, their required job. So why not have everybody required to take a photograph and send it in, and then the benefit of that is, you know, as Councilmember Hucker was saying, uh, we would develop a database, we would know what is in each building, and then we would be able to assess the progress of Washington Gas in making these replacements. And we, we would actually have a view. Otherwise, we're relying upon Washington Gas to tell, to report, you know, what they know and how much progress they've made. And it seems like, you know, we could do better. We could actually be in the you know, in, in, in a strong position for oversight and accountability. And it doesn't, again, I don't know what expense there really is to go to take a photograph of your regulator and email it in. Uh, you know, I'm going to go so far as to say I don't think there's an expense. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I appreciate that there may be something I don't know. Um, but uh, I'll ask Council President if he wants to talk about these amendments and then we can um, get a response from our stakeholders, DHCA as well, and uh, and then we'll see where, you know, see how this comes together. Um, th thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, just, I, I'm sure we're just gonna stay on the first one for now, um, um, if that's your plan. I, I think your suggested amendment is is a great one. This is only the latest reminder, probably why I'm not the Fed Committee Chair. Um, we, we might have included that, but yeah, I, um, once you pointed it out, um, and hearing from AOBA about their um, you know, uh, lack concern about whether, you know, we should rely on the judgment of a maintenance worker, maybe in a dark boiler room to assess, you know, is this a mercury regulator or a different type of regulator? As Christine said, it looks relatively straightforward, but none of us are experts. Um, this is their equipment. And you're right, it's not really any more onerous to just ask every landlord to send in a picture of, of their equipment and then um, both allow Washington Gas to sort it out and allows um, DHCA to develop um, a more useful database so that we could monitor the progress in this area. Terrific. Uh, Councilmember Friedson. Jay, got to make introductory uh, comments. I, I want to thank the sponsor, echo the comments that uh, were made. This is a really serious and important issue. Obviously, we can't fix what hasn't happened and what uh, the issues that were, uh, you know, the devastating consequences of uh, what uh, has or hasn't occurred in the past, but we can uh, move forward the best that we can. I think the good news is, as the chair mentioned, uh, the PSC has stepped in. Now we want to make sure that we're in a position to ensure that this order is followed and our residents are kept safe. Um, you know, I do think it's important that we not uh, create uh, any conflicts and that we not create any unreasonable uh, uh, expectations for residents of who they should be holding accountable and who they should be kind of demanding uh, uh, this uh, to happen from. And I think we're trying to work through that uh, as we speak. So I, I think it's a good recommendation. I just wanted to get a sense and, and raise the issue. My understanding from the PSC order is that a survey is required. Uh, Washington Gas has to do uh, you know, that that uh, survey. And so the question would be whether or not the pictures that we're talking about would be part of that survey and whether uh, there might be uh, a way to include the language that the county, you know, would receive access, uh, you know, to the results of that uh, survey by a date certain. Um, you know, I just, I just raised that so that we can kind of bring everything in, uh, into one uh, umbrella, make sure that we're getting the level of accountability that, 
uh, we desire since, you know, uh, you know, that is our uh, role here, uh, but that we're not creating duplicative or, you know, confusing kind of dual track. So uh, it would be helpful maybe to get a sense of that. And, you know, my understanding as well is that the county is a party, uh, you know, to that PSC uh, order. And so the question would be, um, you know, what level we have there. Because my, my view is we won't know, you know, unless Washington Gas is doing this, to me, the, we won't know if the landlord missed it or not. You know, if the landlord didn't act or the landlord just didn't know, um, I don't know that the county would be in a position to have any idea whether or not uh, the, the picture has taken place. Washington Gas should be aware of all of the, you know, uh, you know, all of these regulators that are in existence and then to determine, you know, which are, uh, functioning, which, you know, uh, you know, which, which are not. And so, you know, to me, the onus should be on Washington Gas. I get that we want to be able to hold Washington Gas accountable on behalf of residents to keep them safe. And that is certainly the goal here, which I totally support and, and appreciate. But, um, you know, ultimately, it's Washington Gas's responsibility and our ability to hold them accountable. We should uh, figure that out. So I, I, I yield to you, Mr. Chair, but I, I Appreciate this. I just wonder what, how it fits vis-a-vis -vis the PSC order, what our role is there, whether or not this already exists, and whether we can just require um, by a date certain that we be part of it. So I don't know if you want to turn to the other stakeholders. Yeah, why don't we start with DHCA and then we'll, I guess we don't have uh, Washington Gas on this at, at the meeting, but we have Mr. Caldwell uh, with AOBA, and I know he's in dialogue with Washington Gas. So, good morning, everyone. Asim Nigam, uh, Director of DSCA. The county executive supports the bill, and DSCA will be ready to administer, you know, whatever the final bill is. So, whether it's Washington Gas notifying the landlord and then the landlord notifying DSCA or the landlord notifying. DSCA and Washington Gas, you know, so we'll be happy to set up a searchable database. So that's where we, we will be. Okay. Thank so you. to the specific point, I think the legislation seeks to have landlords report to DHCA and Washington Gas. Is that right, Christine? Um, the legislation speaks to the landlords notifying DHCA. Um, and yes, you're correct. They would also need to have. Um, Yes, also notifying Washington Gas in order to schedule the replacement. Um, yeah, and the, and the issue, just just briefly, if I may, I think, you know, Council Member Reamer is raising a very excellent point and part of the part of the nuance of this law, I or this bill, is that you know we as the county um, have very limited ability to direct Washington Gas in terms of what they do when they do it. Um, that's really more under the jurisdiction of the state. So what we do have the ability to do is to regulate landlord tenant affairs. And so that kind of, I, I mean, sort of indirectly, I hope that helps um, address Council Member Friedson's question. Well, but I do think it would be helpful, uh, maybe Mr. Caldwell could explain what is in the PSC order and then how this particular dynamic would relate to it. Because my understanding is there is a survey that is required as part of the PSC order of all of the mercury regulators within a year. I'm just concerned that, you know, we have no idea whether or not a property owner is taking the right picture or not. You know, whether they don't respond or whether they because right. it wasn't that's, a mercury regulator or they do, yeah. You know, that's why do, I wanted to, that's why have I no wanted idea. to broaden that requirement and say you, because you're describing, I think, is, is, is a, a reality based on this new order. I think that, you know, the bill has to adjust a bit. But what you're describing is a reality that if no email comes in, we don't know if that's because it's safe or because the landlord has never responded. So if we say you must, every landlord must send in a photo of their regulator, then that is no longer the condition. And at that point, true, we don't know if that photo that they send us allows us to make a determination or Washington Gas to make a determination, but it's more information. And at least it's not the assumption that a non-response means it's safe. 
And it also doesn't put the landlord in the position of being the making the judgment. And that is a judgment that ultimately should fall to Washington Gas because they are the liable party through the PSC. And so what we're trying to do, I think, is facilitate a more rapid program and the three-year timeline that the PSC has mandated, I guess, is a statewide mandate. Um, and, you know, maybe we can facilitate a more rapid process in the county. Uh, Mr. Hucker and then Mr. Caldwell. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, th I think you're exactly right. Um, and I failed to say this earlier, um, but you reminded me when you said the word rapid. Um, history has shown that we can't leave our residents' safety up to either the PSC or to Washington Gas. They failed, and we have residents who are no longer with us because of that and other ones that walk around injured every day, um, that many of whom I've, I've, I've met multiple times. Um, we don't have regulatory authority over Washington Gas. We do have some, you know, responsibility here. We have some moral authority. Um, and if we can develop a database and we can um, use our regulatory regulatory authority over landlords to do what Washington Gas's vice president asked me to do, which was to help them assemble um, a database of where these exist and ensure access to them, then we've done at least our job and we can make the public aware and our residents aware of where these exist and what, how quickly they've been replaced. The We have very little control over the Public Service Commission, as you mentioned. Um, uh, it's now uh, majority or, or entirely appointed by um, Governor Hogan. None of the members live in Montgomery County. Um, they have a statewide mandate. Washington Gas has a territory that includes Prince George's and D.C. They now have a very um, forgiving three-year timeline to do what they were supposed to have completed um, eight years ago at this point. So the goal of the bill and what they, what they, what Washington Gas's previous staff had asked me to do is to give them 60 days to notify them about where these are and they'll get them replaced. If we, if I could just help remove the barrier that they run into, which is they don't know where they are. So, you know, that's, um, that's why it's critical that I think we not rely on the order, not rely on Washington Gas, not rely on the PSC alone. They've given them three years to keep our residents safe to do something they were supposed to do eight years ago. We should, I think, pass the bill with a strict timeline and then continue to, you know, make public um, the fact that these exist and that they are keeping our residents and the landlord's property, frankly, and the landlord's staff at risk and need to be replaced expeditiously. Um, otherwise, Washington Gas has no reason to prioritize our residents over D.C. or or, or, or uh, Prince George's or anywhere else. If we provide that information to them and we help educate the public about the process, then there will be, you know, I think, optimized pressure on Washington Gas to respond to this uh, and replace these quickly. Thank you. Mr. Caldwell. Thank you, uh, uh, thank you Mr. Chairman. Can, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Sometimes I, my, my laptop goes in and out. Um, I think I have two basic responses to the discussion, and, and let me begin by thanking each of you for the opportunity to, to, uh, to discuss this issue. Um, the first issue is, you know, I think there was a statement that, um, well, let me just say there's some danger in not allowing the commission's process to be fulfilled, to be completed. Washington Gas, pursuant to the commission's order, is required to work with the Consumer Services Division, the Engineering Division on the commission, commission staff to come up with a plan for customer notification and termination of the process. The danger I see is that you can have overlapping and confusing uh, obligations and responsibilities. On the one hand, you have under the bill, landlords who are required to take certain actions to notify customers and then you have a plan that has been, that will eventually be sanctioned or approved by the Public Service Commission that does the same thing. And so I think there's a real- uh, Mr. Oh, let's hold on the customer notification issue. That's the next, that's the next uh, point of conversation. Can we get your comments just on the, the, the core first question of uh, an amendment to the proposed legislation requiring property owners to notify, to take take a photo and send it to both Washington Gas and DHCA of their regulator, regardless of what kind of regulator it is. Thank you. Okay, uh, my, my apologies, Your Honor. Um, That's okay. The the, um, 
Your, 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 your honor. Probably the your last honor. time <laughs> anyone will call me your honor. That's great. Thank you. Old, old, old habits die hard. Your, I will send your honor. Again. Oh, sorry. Um, you know, the, the problem there is that, you know, is this really something we want to impose upon landlords? You know, this is Washington Gas's uh, property. It is their responsibility. And yeah, it's easy to say that you can go to the Washington Gas website, look at their, look at their pictures or their video, and then go find the mercury regulator. You know, Washington Gas can't even tell you how many how many mercury service regulators they have on their system. And I think it would be unfair uh, uh, and unjust to ask landlords to do that. This is not what they do. This is not what land. This is not the responsibility. And it's Washington Gas's property. You know, if there's a problem with mercury gas service regulators. Washington Gas should be responsible for fixing it. Should landlords be required to expedite the process to make it as convenient as possible? Yes, but uh, again, and I, I'm I'm sorry, it's bleeding into the to the other issue. But you know, you'll have a bunch of landlords submitting pictures. Some of them not entirely sure whether they took a picture of a gas meter or a gas regulator or 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 what they took a picture of, and and sending it in. Uh, with it and and balance that against the the uh, obligations on Washington Gas imposed by the commission. So you know, AOBA supports fully supports you know a, a, a an aggressive cooperative approach by landlords to you know grant Washington Gas access access. But you know, we think it's a little unfair to ask uh, landlords to be responsible for what is Washington Gas's uh, property and Washington Gas's property. Okay, uh, Councilor Rajwanda, followed by Councilor Friesen. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Carwell, I'm assuming you're, you're an attorney. It's nice to have another one on the line here. So th 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 it's, that was good to hear. Uh, um, so I, underst I understand what you're saying, but you know, isn't it a core responsibility of a landlord to provide safe, habitable housing? Would you agree with that? I would. You're, yes, sir. Yeah, no, that's all right. Yes. Okay. One so another. Okay. So the what I struggle with is that the expertise issue you mentioned, and I, and it's hard for me absent someone from Washington Gas here. So I guess you're the proxy, and it's not a. I'll, I'll admit it's not fair to you in this moment to to be that proxy, and I'm I'm a little disappointed, and I don't understand why we don't have someone from Washington Gas here, but the how difficult, and Councilman Reamer, I think, kind of was alluding to this, how difficult would it be to find where these things are and to take that picture? Like, I certainly don't want to require something that could be impossible for a landlord to do, right? And so I, I need more information about, you know, I know where the ones were in Flower Branch. It wasn't impossible, right? They could have taken a picture of those. Um, and so I, we want to have, you say you want to have the cooperative agreement. I think part of that agreement and that core responsibility of a landlord to provide safe, habitable housing is if you're unsure, you know, this is life and death. This isn't like some inconvenience. This is, we want to get as much information as possible to make this happen as fast as possible, realizing that Washington Gas has not lived up to the responsibility. But at this point, it's lives are on the line. So we need every, we need all the information we can get. So I would just, you know, what's your knowledge of, the ability of the landlord to to get these pictures. Uh, I don't know. To be frank, I I, I, I don't know. I, my guess is, and it's an educated guess, um, is that some of these will be easy to find. There may be a few that are, are difficult to find. I think it's significant uh, for whatever reason. Washington Gas cannot tell you how many mercury service regulators they have on their system, and and that's why they're doing the survey. Uh, one survey is going to be completed within a year. The other survey is going to be completed within three years. And um, again, I think that uh, uh, this is, I can't say it enough. This is Washington Gas's property. Landlords do have an obligation to provide safe, um, uh, uh, safe, a safe building. But Washington Gas has a statutory obligation to provide, you know, safe service, safe and, re and reasonable service. This is their property. It is their responsibility. And to make a landlord a partner in this process um, where they have no expertise, where they may not even know where the uh, mercury service regulator it is, where they've got to go down and, and find it, perhaps with a flashlight, um, um, trying to take a picture 
of something that they may not be entirely sure that they're taking a picture of a Mercury service regular. I will admit to you that that would be difficult for me. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, well, we're not trying to not trying to evade any responsibility or or make a building unsafe. What we're trying to do is locate uh, or place responsibility in the proper place, the most effective place, to make sure that uh, the buildings are safe. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm I'm coming to come back, but I want to hear my colleagues say thank you. All right, Mr. Fries. Thanks. Um, Yeah, the whole dynamic of this is a little odd to me. I mean, I get we're in a tough spot because we don't regulate the regulator, which is regulated by the state, and so we're trying to kind of you know, jerry-rig a regulation here in order to keep residents safe, and we all desperately want to do that. Uh, It is odd because it seems to me that the property owners and the county, on behalf of the residents, are really on the same team here uh, and the same side, wanting to make sure that Washington Gas is providing safe service because it's the property owner's uh, staff that is at risk, just as much as the residents are. Uh, You know, every day anybody who works on the property is – uh, is, is 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 at risk, uh, not to mention the, the property. Obviously, you know, people are much more important than property, but, um, you know, it would seem to me that we're on the same page. And on this, we're kind of switching it where the county is on a different side and Washington Gas and the property owners are on the same side, which I don't, you know, I'm, it, I'm uh, trying to wrap my head around a little bit. Um, it. it, it to, to, to me, I guess the question is, the idea that we're going to speed this up, I don't think is realistic. And I think we need to set realistic expectations for residents. If the goal here is to uh, have a level of accountability that we don't believe that we have because we don't have the type of regulatory authority over Washington gas that we believe we would need, I think that's a completely reasonable approach, but I, I don't believe we're in a position or have the power to speed this up. I wish we did. I wish we could. I don't believe uh, I don't believe we, we, we do. And so I think as we figure out and determine ultimately where we land on this, it should be along the lines of we want to make sure that we have the information we believe we need to hold Washington Gas accountable and to ensure that the PSC follows through with its order, which it has a checkered history of, you know, actually ensuring that the things that it requires get done and people's lives have been, you know, put at risk because of that. And so I I just want to, I mean, that's where I am at least. I, I don't know exactly where I come down on that, but, but, you know, I think that that is the aspect of we, we aren't in a position to change the order of this. I think it's just very important as we figure out what tools we're going to use and how we're going to use them that we recognize what we can do and what we can't do, and then we follow through on that. And I think the, the accountability piece and having the information that we would need is important. And I think the question to me is what is what is the survey that we're talking about? What is included in it? Are these pictures part of it? Uh, you know, when is that due? What would be the timeline that we would be you know, thinking about creating the, the database that we're uh, talking about doing as an alternative, and how do those two fit together? That to me is still unclear. Okay, so I'm going to go to Tom in a moment. I just want to review the bidding here. We have, you know, as written, the legislation uh, requires a property owner to determine if they have a regulator, and then to send that to DHCA and Washington Gas. Uh, right, Christine? That's that's how it is written correct and then, and then we've received a request from aoba and washington gas to amend it to eliminate that requirement and then replace it with making commercially reasonable efforts to coordinate the replacement um i don't support that i mean i don't think we have to do that i think that they are obligated to do that by the psc and i think that a better approach is to just require property owners to take a photograph of their regulator and send it in. So we, on the one hand, are relieving them of having to make a judgment as to whether it is a mercury regulator or not. On the other hand, we're getting more assurance that all properties will do it. And so we're not having to assume that a property that hasn't reported is 
you know, does not have this device, but actually will we'll have a better chance of knowing. As for how it meshes with the state survey, I don't know. I don't know that we should really get into that because that's Washington Gas's survey. And, you know, they may find that this is a useful data point for them and it, and it serves to, you know, check a box in their other survey requirement or, or not. But their survey is on their timeline and I think we can do a faster, uh, you know, process on our own. Um, so I, I want to hear what uh, Mr. Harker says and then ask Christine, you know, for the language that we would need to achieve what, what we're talking about here. So. Um, thanks, Mr. Chairman. So again, um, this bill essentially was suggested by Washington Gas staff prior to this latest sort of um, this latest order um, by the Public Service Commission. They told me at the time they needed to collect this information from landlords so they could replace these. And we shouldn't, I don't think, let that be out there as any kind of barrier to rapid, expeditious replacement of these. Um, they've changed their staff since then. Um, now they have a new order and a, and a very forgiving timeline from the PSC. Um, but again, they failed to meet the first timeline and, so, and the PSC repeatedly failed to do their job and enforce it. They not only fined them for their failure, and it was a joke of a fine, they, f they uh, found that Washington Gas had failed to file the required annual reports updating the PSC on their um, execution of the replacement plan. So we can only do what we can do. We do know, history has shown, that we can't trust our resident safety to Washington Gas um, or to the PSC. So, you know, I just wanted to, to add that, as Councilmember Jawando said, it's the responsibility of landlords to provide safe housing. It's also not just their responsibility, it's completely in the landlord's interest to get this done, to protect their residents, to protect their staff, many of whom uh, live in these multifamily buildings, um, and to protect their property. This is, the landlord should be crying out for a bill like this, and they would have benefited if it had been in place earlier. Um, I, to Mr. Caldwell's point, I, I just don't think we should, like, throw a lot of smoke and be confusing, even if there are some landlords who don't take the right picture or do, don't respond quickly or whatever, even if 90% of our landlords did this very simple cost-free task of just taking a picture and sending it in, we could assemble a database, we could push Washington Gas um, to uh, get this done, we could publicize uh, where this has been done and where it hasn't been done, and we could use our limited authority to accelerate this process. Um, that's the whole point. We shouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good and confuse everybody about maybe there's a landlord somewhere that doesn't send in a picture. We can do what we can do. We can collect these, this information, allow DHCA to use its regulatory authority to encourage the replacements, and we can give Washington Gas the information that they requested to make expeditious replacement of these. Thank you. Thank you. Do we, do we lose the chair? There he is. I think Mr. Caldwell, right. Mr. Caldwell, you would agree that this is in the landlord's interest, right? Not just your responsibility, but to protect your staff and your residents. Oh, we agree. I, I think all of us agree right. with the basic premise, which is that these these uh, regulators should be replaced as expeditiously as possible. I think Thank we you. agree. We have a we have a slight disagreement as to the most effective way to do that. Thank and, you. You know, we, we also agree that this is Washington Gas's responsibility, Washington Gas's, you know, Washington Gas's property. And totally agree. Way, AOBA concludes that, you know, this is a Washington Gas issue, that to impose uh, a responsibility, an obligation on a landlord for someone else's property, for someone else's responsibility um, is unfair. I mean, I, 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 I don't know what happens if a if a landlord you know sends in the wrong picture or if he doesn't do it on a timely basis or you There's, know can't we, we can we can we can get to that i was out of order calling on you but obviously washington gas's property completely affects the safety of your property so it's not just there yeah, I, 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 I just want to emphasize i just want to emphasize that we all agree on the ends 
you know, the replacement, the expeditious replacement of Mercury service regulators, we have a slight disagreement. And it, I, I would characterize it fair, fairly a slight as to the most effective way to get there. And I will just add that the amendment that we're talking about does not require you to make a judgment as to whether it's a Mercury service regulator or not. And that would seem to be a relevant point for you that we're not putting you into that position of having to, you know, essentially be liable for a judgment that you made as opposed to an action that you took. And, you know, it's, it's, I think it's very straightforward to ask you to go take a photo uh, and then do that in a timely manner. Uh, it's a little harder to say, we want you to, you know, it, we want you to determine what it is and then act accordingly. Uh, so, you know, perhaps that is um, relevant. So, Christine, I had asked if you could tell us what the language would be, and then I have Mr. Friedson followed by Mr. Duando. Yes, you, yes, thank you, um, Chair Reamer. Um, the language, we would need to amend lines 18 through 20 of the bill, um, and I would like, with the, with the um, with the committee's permission, I would like to um, kind of noodle with the very specific language of it. But I think the concept of your amendment would be, you know, that that we would split we would split this um, subsection B starting at line 18 into two different paragraphs. Paragraph one could say, you know, consistent with paragraph two, a landlord must verify whether an indoor mercury service regular in the, on the premises um, is on the premises, and then. Uh, the paragraph two would specify the specific things we're asking the landlord to do, which would be take a photograph, send it to Washington Gas and DHCA um, if you want. And this might go to uh, Mr. Caldwell's point is, of course, completely up to the committee. But, you know, we could add if the landlord, you know, if or if the service regulator is in an accessible in an inaccessible location or the landlord, you know, for whatever reason, can't is unable to find it, then they would simply report that fact to DHCA. That would be, another, you know, another nuance that you could add if you wish. Uh, well, but I think we would just need to break down, you know. Uh, I think I was talking sorry. about something different. I am no longer saying that the landlord has to determine whether there is a mercury regulator. I think that that is what I'm saying is they must go and take a photograph, they must report to DHCA and Washington Gas what they have, but they are not obligated to make the determination of what it is. They can try, but it is not their obligation to make that determination. That is Washington Gas's determination, I think, appropriately. But what we want them right. to do is, you know, right away, as fast as is reasonably possible, get in there, take a photograph, and send that information to the county and to Washington Gas. Right, I, I understand that, and that that is um, what I was what I was attempting to articulate, okay. but I might have not I done it well. You were saying we would retain item eight, uh, line eighteen, uh, which says a landlord must verify whether it's right. Working. And I was saying they that they would do that consistent with the paragraph two, which would say exactly you know, what you are articulating to take the photograph and send it in, that those would be the requirements. But I think, you know, to your point, we should probably not say verify, you know, we, sh we need to modify that a bit. And I, uh, I don't have the specific language since, you know, I mean, I think it's a very um, reasonable amendment, but I, you know, I'm hearing about it at the committee meeting. So I, I you know, I apologize, but I don't think I can come yeah. up with the language right. on the fly. I, it's fine. We were we came up with this, you know, thinking it through this morning. But again, I just want to say I think that this way, the county and is not in the position of assuming that a landlord that didn't respond might be safe. And I think we are. We want to say no. We want data on every landlord. We want every property. We want to know, uh, and that way we can do a better job with talking to Washington Gas about and understanding their progress. You know, we, it'll give us more ability to hold them accountable. Okay, uh, I think I the order. 
Yeah, Mr. Caldwell, and then we'll go to Mr. Fritz and Mr. Dwan. Just, just a clarification. The, the idea, your, your suggestion is that the landlord would be responsible for essentially taking a picture of washing gases equipment? Correct. He does not, he or she yep. have to make a distinction or, or specify whether this is a, a mercury service regulator or a gas meter or, you know. Well, I think the county and its regulations would provide very clear guidance as to what it is that we want you to, you know, take a picture of. It, it's our intent to capture the, the regulator, not the meter, I guess, right? But yes, we want we want to instruct the property owners to take a specific picture and then send that in. Of the washing gas equipment I, I, again I, it's probably i'm probably overselling the point but you know my my concern is that there will be some confusion as to you know what a landlord is to take a picture of whether this is a regulator whether this is a meter whether you know what what whatever it is i mean i i think that i i just want to be clear get your your clear instruction um that okay under Mr. advisement you know i think the county will need to provide clear guidance as best we can and hope to avoid you know that complication um okay thank you thank you andrew yeah just a couple of thoughts first of all you know forgive my naivete but does every i mean we're talking about this as if every single property every single rental property in the county has a, a, a mercury regulator some of which work and some of which don't is that the case Is that for me? <laughs> yeah, who, who would you like to answer that question? Well, I would like Washington hey. Gas to answer that question, but since they're, you know, unfortunately absent, which I don't quite understand, uh, and I'm a little puzzled, like we're, apparently this provision is something that they requested, um, which <laughs> not sure why they're in a position to request uh, due to their failure to comply, but um you know we are where we are so uh, whoever is in a position to answer the question and the you know due to the fact that the obvious uh entity that uh, should be answering the question uh, isn't here for some reason beyond my understanding comprehension or control uh, if anybody, dan, you know, maybe. dan i'm muted can you yeah, we can hear you yeah we okay, can hear great um yes yeah, so Gas is here. I mean, I can try to, you know, look at some of the stuff. based on their website, you know, tell you which one could be mercury or not. Hey, Dan, yeah, then you're, you're breaking up, Dan. Okay. Yeah, your, audio, your audio quality, maybe just if you can lean a little closer to wherever you think the mic is. Let me try something. Is it any better? Maybe. Is it better now? Go ahead. Go ahead again. Okay. It's within the county, right now, we have. 694 multi-family complexes, and out of those, I, I couldn't. I think I, I'm having trouble hearing you. 694 what? Multi-family complexes. Multi-family. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Within that, if you look at the website, they talk about these mercury regulators being in units younger than 1970. So of those 694, 463 complexes have potential have mercury regulators in them prior to nineteen seventy. How many Dan? How many did you say? Four hundred and sixty three complexes. Four hundred and sixty three have a potential to have a mercury regulator. Because they had to have been built before nineteen seventy in order to Correct. that to be the case. Correct. Okay. Yes. So with those, you know, that's a potential starting point. Um, one thing we haven't done is communicated with Washington Gas if they kind of want to you know, reach out to. Um, but I have a list of those that we could provide to Washington Gas if needed. They could, you know, go through and check their records if they have those. There's some things there that we can work with if needed. Okay, hey Dan, uh, I don't know if you have time now while we continue, but you can dial in on your phone for the audio portion. Okay. Uh, and then you won't be reusing your computer for the audio. Could, could I just, so that, that is helpful. I, 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 we're not talking about a lot of properties here. You know, I, I think that's important to, to note. So I think we need to like narrow the, the language of this, the way right. that this has been discussed. Maybe is, properties before 19. You know, we have hundreds of thousands of rental properties, you know, 
in, in, in the county, over 100,000. We're talking about a few hundred here. And so I think we need to narrow and uh, tailor that. I think that would be uh, appropriate just so we can uh, un understand, uh, you know, what we're uh, talking about here. Um, you know, I think making it before 1970, which is the only, you know, you know, you know will, will help us uh, to, to do that. I think that the county, since it isn't a huge number, you know, the county should be doing proactive outreach uh, to those folks as part of this to say, here's what your responsibility is and give clear guidance of what we're looking for. Um, you know, if we're only talking about 463 uh, properties, they, some of those might be owned by the same entity, the same, or have the same uh, like management company, you know, so on and so forth. So it might be even fewer uh, than that. It doesn't seem like a terribly heavy lift for DHCA uh, to, to, to take on. I, I do think it would be helpful before we vote on this, um, you know, either at full council or here if we're waiting for Christine to provide us with uh, the, the details of, of what exactly, you know, we're going to ask to take a picture of, because I'm still unclear the idea of like we're asking for a picture. I mean, I, I, I kind of with Mr. Caldwell here, um, you know, what is the picture of and we're asking the wrong entity because we don't have the uh, regulatory authority over the right entity and the right entity didn't bother to show up so we can't really ask them um you know i think that would be uh you know uh, frankly helpful the last piece here that, that i would ask is uh, how we're going to handle common ownership communities so if you're is the is the is the uh the condo association responsible for that, I mean, I think we have to explicitly say that. I mean, it could be that there aren't very many that fall under that uh, dynamic, but um, yeah, I do think that's a broad question. Are we requiring the hundred units uh, in the building that may be individually uh, owned, and some of those are, you know, relatively affordable uh, units? Um, and who, who's responsible for those, or or is this just rental? We, we uh, uh, just rental, and if it's just rental, what happens if it's a building, a condo building that uh, some of which is owner occupied and some of which are rented by individual, um, you know, individual property. So I, I just I think there's a little bit of nuance to this that we need to kind of work through. I don't think it, you know I think it's a, a reasonable you know route to to take, but I do think we have to kind of think through and work through. And I think you know we're we can use a scalpel on this because it is a scalpel dynamic with a relatively limited number of impacted properties, understanding that those limited properties face significant, potentially life and death, uh, uh, you know, risks. And so we need to be, you know, doing what we can to keep them safe, which I totally uh, appreciate. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it, I'll leave it at for now. Okay. Uh, let me just say we, we did invite Washington Gas, um, and I guess what we were told is that they decided not to appear because they have been working with AOBA, and they felt that Mr. Caldwell uh, sufficiently could speak for them. Um, so that, that comes as a surprise to me here. Honestly. Okay, I, I was I was wondering whether you were aware. Uh, um, interesting. Mr. Okay. Chairman, just to Councilman Friedson's point, I emailed yeah. everybody, since I don't have access to the chat, um, photos that are on the Washington Gas website of what the regulators look like. Um, it's Yeah, it's linked in the packet, I think. Yeah, and yeah it's, thank you. Yeah, It's very helpful to actually click on that, because you can, it just gives you a visual sense of what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Chris. Uh, just a question for Christine. Christine, I want to be clear on this bill. Does this only apply to multifamily housing? This applies to landlords as, as defined under Chapter 29. So I believe that would include single-family housing as well. Do single-family houses built before 1970 also have mercury regulators? Yes, they, yes, some do. That was yeah. going to be one of my questions. And they're, you know, you, uh, you're, you're next. Uh, would, <laughs> are they viewed as a safety issue as well? Is it, is it the regulator? It doesn't matter what building type. It's the regulator that's the risk. I believe that is correct. Okay. Yep. Well, thank you. Thank you Mr. Mr. Uh, yeah. Um, so I will do uh, this for the benefit to Councilmember Hucker's point. These are the regulators. Thank you. Great. And uh, you know, on the left is the old mercury regulator, and on the right is the 
you know, the more common one that most yeah, post 1970. I do think it's important to see here that this is from Washington Gas's website. They say that the that there's nothing wrong with the regulators here. They say uh, they were there. The only thing is that there's mercury. They, they they call them vintage, and they and they say in the first sentence here, the type of service regulator is while an older vintage operates as safely and as effectively as other regulators across the system. The primary reason to remove these regulators is to eliminate mercury from our environment. Obviously, the whole premise of this bill um, and what happened, that's not thats not necessarily true. So I think that's a problem in and of itself, uh, the way that, and that's Washington Gas, if you type Washington Gas Mercury Service Regulators, that's the, the two-page PDF that comes up. Um, so going back to the 463, so that's 463 multifamily properties that are built after or before 1970. That's what you were saying, Dan, right? You're on mute, but I'm a, I saw you nod. You're still on mute. Okay. Sorry, I think, Dan, I think that you, you can plug your headset. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes, no, got, you, got you. Got you. Got okay, you. here we go. So of those four, 463, those are complexes that are licensed within the county. They exclude the city of Tacoma Park, Rockville, and Gaithersburg. So okay. these are just that we handle rental license is for right. of the 75,000 units that we are responsible for. Got it. And the PSC order, I think to the last question, did include, like Washington Gas has to replace these at homes and at uh, multifamily properties. Is that the understanding of the PSC order, Mr. Caldwell? Yes, it is. Okay. So, and then Mr. Hucker, the bill addresses both because Ms. Ms. Wellens just clarified that it's it's whatever, any rental, whether it's multifamily or single family. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so it is more than 460, the 463 regulated understanding that there's Tacoma Park. There, it's probably higher than 463. So there is a process. Go ahead, Mr. Hucker, you're going to say something? I, I just, and I, I apologize, I didn't catch Dan's factoid. Um, was it that number of interior mercury regulators, or is that all of them? Because it's really that's just yeah, that's entire complexes. We don't know whether they're inside or out. Right, but do you agree it's the interior ones that pose the threat because the gas is allowed to build up, but the exterior ones don't pose a threat? That I don't know. I mean, based on their their uh, Washington Gas's website, they're 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 calling all mercury regulators to be re replaced. Right. But that's a good point, Ms. Hucker, because the ex most of the homes would be exterior, mm -hmm. um, right, which is, right. you know, you have the environmental concern being more primary maybe in that case as opposed to the multifamily. Um, and the, so, commission, the commission's order address was, was geared toward indoor. Uh, indoor. Right. Okay. So, all right. So that's, so then that, that does help a little bit then in that most of, there may be, I don't I'm not an expert. There may be an indoor single family home mercury regularly but I, most of those are outside homes so i would that, think it would be less okay so you got 463 that we know about maybe a few more in municipalities um i agree with uh you know councilman friedson's point that since it's a smaller issue we want to gather this information and we want to create an incentive to do it i think the uh removing the lie of you know quote unquote liability from the uh landlord to be taking a picture of the right you know certifying or you know making a statement that this is the correct thing i'm taking a picture of we shouldn't put that on them i think we all agree on that too um it's just the question of how to uh design the language in such a way that gathers this important information particularly now that we know that it's a targeted population and even on w um on washington gas's website they say less than 10 percent of the regulators are these just in the universe in the region so it, it's it's a small it's a small amount. So so yeah, I, I would be you know, Miss Wellens, I guess I would be supportive of an amendment that says you have to make an attempt to take an you have to take it a picture of what what you think the whatever the where you think the gas regulator is, and there's no you know there's no you have to send that into DHCA, and then I think DHCA we might want to think about in addition to this 
since it's a known universe, you know, we could do really targeted and you could deal with this in the regulations, but you all could provide assistance and expertise. I'm sure Dan McHugh and his team know what a cert, you know, a regulator looks like better than a landlord. And that's all positive information. And to the extent that the PSC and Washington gas are doing a process and they want to work with us, uh, you know, and we can provide them this information. I, th I think it serves to help that, but also it's an accountability mechanism because we can't just wash our hands and say, well, you know, PSC is, PSC is going to do it. And they told us they're going to do it. So we're, we're happy with that. So, so I would, you know, I don't think we have it today, but I would support something with that type of, uh, type of language. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I think we have agreement. Anybody? So if I can just interject for a second. So just to clarify, are we talking about just the multifamily properties only because we have another 20 or 25,000 single family detached condos or townhomes. We have 30,000 licensees in the county. Yeah, so I would just want to clarification on that point, but I think Council Member Jawanda was noting the indoor and, and, and the sponsor, indoor being the, the huge risk to life and death, which was the purpose, I don't want to speak for the sponsor, but based on his comments here and previously was the you know, the impetus behind the, the bill. And so to Councilmember Jawanda's point, which was kind of reiterating my point, I think we should, you know, try to focus this as much as we can in a in, in the area in which both places the highest risk to residents and two is the most doable, both for DHCA to uh, ensure compliance and for uh, the, 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 the property owners. And, and I, you know, certainly if we expand it out to tens of thousands that is a completely different dynamic in terms of our ability to actually follow through. And I do want to be a little careful of continuing down a path. You know, this is an issue that has a history of setting out with a requirement and not following through on that requirement. And so we, we don't want to kind of exacerbate and continue the, the problems of the past by creating new problems moving forward. So, you know, I, I just will put that out. I would be much more comfortable if we focused on the acute issue of indoor, the you know few hundred properties. If we can figure out how to deal with the um, the, the uh, common ownership question, I don't know how that that could be a very small number uh, pre nineteen seventy you know, of that four hundred sixty three. How many of those are common ownership and, and 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 work through that issue? Just who's responsible for taking what picture? I'd imagine that most individual condo. Owners don't know where the mercury regulator is inside the utility room. Uh, let, the, I want to ask a question about that. So, in a common ownership community, you know, garden style uh, community, is there a regulator for the whole structure, or is there a different regulator for each unit? And it would depend. Yeah, it would. Be, it would depend. I mean, a lot of these complexes have one per building or multiple per building. So it, it, it's no, uh, you know, uh, rubber stamp for all for every unit, every every facility. I see. But, would, but, would, but wouldn't the, you know, be, because of all the requirements that the association would have related to this, wouldn't the association, uh, you know, be aware of that? I mean, we could require that the individual property owner allow at like cannot deny access so if you have a tenant or something neither the tenant nor the landlord could deny access to the management company or somebody hired to take a to go in and take a picture but to put the impetus on a hundred as opposed to on one yeah it makes it much much harder for the county right. to actually follow through on this honestly no it should be the it should be the the association i mean that's the appropriate the association will then work with property owners as needed, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah, so, I think in that sense, we just have to say, you know, we would just have to include that the access has to be provided. Okay. Because, you know, we're, we're, we're basically bestowing responsibility upon groups that are not really responsible for this. So we have to, as best as we can, kind of work through those Dynamics, and like I said, I think this is a little nuanced, but we could come to a. Oh, it's an important subset of this, you know, the building type. So, you know, if we could just ask DHCA to give some thought to this and work with Christine 
and we'll get some precise language that works for the different types of housing. Chris had asked earlier, is this applying to single family rent properties that are rented? I think the answer is yes. Um, but it's also, is it the same 1970? Uh, you know, 1970 is a 1970, regardless of what building type, right? Um, so I would, I mean, if we, if these things leak gas, we don't want them. What is the PSC order doing as far as, uh, single family properties? Are they also expected to replace those? Yes. And, and I apologize for not knowing, but Washington gas is committed and the commission has approved you know, a survey, there will be a one year survey and there will be a three year survey. A one year survey, I believe would be for the residential customers and the three year survey will be for the, um, I'm sorry, for the residential buildings, the three year survey for the commercial buildings. I may have that, that flip flopped. I, I was trying to find the, um, the, the specific testimony, but this, this discussion highlights the issue that, you know, Washington Gas itself has to conduct a survey to figure out what buildings have what, whether re certain residential buildings have, have mercury service regulators, whether they don't, whether commercial uh, multifamily buildings have. Okay. Um, hey, can I, don't need to interrupt you, but you're making a good point here. So for, uh, what, maybe, maybe this is something where we would defer to the PSC on the single family properties but not on the multifamily properties. You know, I, I could see a I could see a rationale there. Um, but uh, again, the 463, Dan, was that multifamily only or was that, that was multifamily only? So I guess it's just a question. Yeah, only multifamily, yeah. We want to collect the information for single family rental properties or not. I mean, we can if we get 15,000 of them you know, are we going to be able to use that information? I guess that's a kind of a core question. Um, you know, or is that a little overwhelming? I could see it being very manageable for the multifamily. I think we would need DHCA to, you know, I mean, give if, us the, if the idea is that, that the landlord will send us the picture, then our inspector needs to look at the picture and see whether or not it has mercury, although it may not take that much time. But then we are putting the responsibility of deciphering the information from the photograph onto DHCA. And those will be several thousands of pictures that we'll have to go through. Versus 463 multifamily properties and maybe a subset of those properties may have this uh, mercury service regulators that may be manageable. And I will have Chris and Dan speak as well, you know, what they think, what will totally be manageable with their, their inspectors. Yeah, and I think one thing we could do also is run the uh, single-family uh, portfolio to see what the numbers would actually be as far as, you know, is there, you know, out of the 20,000-ish uh, single families, is it 10,000, is it 5,000? So uh, we, we can make that determination and get back to Christine about the numbers and then see if that's something that, you know, may be, you know, looking reasonable to do. If you could do that and also maybe provide a recommendation to us as to whether you recommend, you know, including those properties, uh, at least just so we have that. Andrew. Okay. All right. We'll do. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I do think that, it, you know, let's make sure we can actually follow through on what we, you know, set out here because I, I think, you know, that, that's important. Um, I do also think it's important, you know, we talked about it in the beginning, just to, as part of this conversation, we are a party to the PSC order and we do have some rights, not as many as we would like admittedly, but we do have some rights, you know, and access to information based on that. So I think that would be helpful as well because there is a survey, they should be, you know, there should already be a process for all of these single family homes, which may be, you know, significant for us to take on particularly when there's already a process that's taking place and perhaps we can just get that information, you know, when it is available, we should know when it's going to be available, what we're going to get, and then ultimately what we would want to do with it. I think that would be helpful as part of this as well. And I would just like to, you know, raise as, as part of this, at least 
at some point there was um, uh, an effort and interest in having uh, a specific person in the office of the county attorney focused exclusively on you know these types of PSC related regulatory issues. Uh, I'm not sure where that ever went if we actually have somebody in the county attorney's office who does that but um, I would just note that say that it would be very helpful in a conversation like this to actually have somebody with that level of uh, expert expertise and understanding. I don't think we have it here. Uh, you know, Washington Gas isn't here. We don't have that perspective. The county doesn't really have uh, anybody here who fully understands the uh, PSC order. Uh, you know, I appreciate Mr. Caldwell helping us out since he understands the PSC order probably better than any of us, but you know, he's really not the uh, the most appropriate person to provide us with that uh, understanding either. And so I, I just think, at least for me, somebody who's certainly, you know, I'm not an expert in anything, much less in, uh, you know, energy regulation. But, um, you know, I do think that we lack the expertise at this conversation to really understand, you know, what our rights and regulatory authority is, how we interface, what our role is as a party to the uh, PSC order. And it is, somewhat difficult to determine how to move forward in the absence of that information and that expertise. So I would just note that. Christine. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I apologize, I have to run for another event. Thank you all for having me and for your good work. Thank you, Tom. Just a, a very quick clarification. I found the, the information in the testimony. Uh, Washington Gas uh, proposes to survey Take one year to survey non multifamily. I'm sorry, to um, survey multifamily premises in one year and take three years to survey non multifamily premises. That makes, makes sense. Christine? I just wanted to note in response to um, Councilmember Friedson's point that. Um, you know, I can certainly find out who in the county attorney's office is best positioned you know, who has the expertise to answer some of the committee's questions and identify our precise rights as a county. Uh, the county attorney's office did review the bill and did not have concerns with its legality and felt that it was consistent with the, the PSC order. Um, but, at, you know, as you noted, there is, you know, additional layers of detail that, that they could probably provide. Yeah, I appreciate that. I just, the point that I was making is, you know, there are a lot of nuanced policy questions related to the PSC that you should not be expected to, you know, fully know, uh, you know, in, 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 in a level of depth and detail, uh, nor really does anybody here. DHCA, that's not its core competency. Mr. Caldwell is the general counsel for property owners. I mean, you know, he, he's not an energy regulatory uh, lawyer. Um, you know, certainly none of us are. So um, I, I just... My understanding was that, that that was a direction that we were heading. I, I you know, separately, I'm going to inquire as to where that ever landed. But um, you know, it, it is hard to make policy when we lack the level of expertise that we need. And both not having Washington Gas here and not having somebody on the county's behalf who really understands the county's role vis-a-vis -vis the the PSC order, I, I just do find this exercise uh, pretty challenging, personally. Okay, um, let's continue through, and um, we have a so we have a couple of follow up items, you know, on the first big point, and let's see if uh, where are we on on the remainder points. Christine. Um, yes. Yeah, so the second issue in the staff memorandum, um, which is appearing at page three of the staff memo relates to notification of tenants. This might be a more straightforward issue. I think there's kind of more consensus related to it. Um, uh, DHCA, AOBA, and Washington Gas, um, and, and as well as some uh, nonprofit housing providers that, that we heard from, um, suggested that instead of the uh, current requirement under the bill that tenants be notified immediately by landlords once the landlord um, has determined if a mercury service regulator is present, instead of doing that, that the tenant notification would be would come later in the process. Um, uh, 
uh, only once Washington Gas has confirmed the presence of the regulator. Um, and, you know, a, a reason cited for this is to, you know, an attempt to avoid unnecessary alarm and also avoid confusion um, between tenants and, and landlords. So, that, so this amendment would simply be uh, deleting from the bill lines 21 through 33, 39 through 41, and 56, requiring that initial notice that would no longer be required. Makes sense to me. Uh, any, okay, without objection. S supporting that amendment. Let's continue. Okay. Um, then the third issue is that a, an amendment was requested through public testimony when Washington Gas had requested an amendment uh, clarifying that a tenant must not knowingly or willingly touch, damage, remove, or alter any indoor mercury service regulator on the premises of any rental property. Um, so, you know, um, from the staff position, you know, it doesn't seem to be an objectionable um, amendment. I'm not sure to the extent that it's absolutely necessary, uh, but I, I don't think it's objectionable. Okay. I tend to agree. All right. Andrew. Yeah, I, I agree. I have no problem with this. I just, based on the, the prior conversation, we don't have to discuss, they would discuss it when it comes back, but wondering if the requirement for to provide adequate access um, you know, it's something that we need to include. You know, if there's going to be a, you know, the picture requirement and, you know, the, you know, specifically related to the common error. I just wanted to, I mentioned it quickly. I just wanted to kind of put a pin in it because it is related to a, a tenant obligation, uh, so to speak, uh, with this. The idea would be, um, you know, I think that already exists within any, you know, um, lease, uh, you know, requirement. I mean, there are certain, you know, uh, that's a safety issue. So I, I, we might not, it might not be necessary at all, but I just wanted to kind of put a pin in it to make sure that we at least address it and decide if it's not necessary or if it is to include it. But I'm, I'm more than comfortable. Yeah. I mean, is there, uh, is there any reason to think that that concern is not fully, you know, pre existing? Like already addressed, essentially. Like they're 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 not allowed to prohibit you know impede access, right? Well, there there's certain notice requirements. I Landlord tenant law, as we all know, is a little bit more nuanced. Um, you know, I think for a safety issue, there you know you do have the ability. The question is how imminent this safety issue is to take a picture of a safety issue that may or may not exist. I mean, I, I think that's. You know, it, it's not like you're aware of a flood, you know, that could be a safety issue or some other, you know, major issue where you're allowed to just go in, you know, I, and depending on what requirement we place on the landlord or on the association. All right. Um, I'll tell you what, if, you know, noodle on it, if you want to recommend some language the next time. You it's know. hard for me to recommend it if I don't know what the, that's why I'm raising it. I don't know what Ms. Wells is going to come up with the language that was discussed Previously, I just, that's why I just wanted it to be kind yeah. of in back of mind as that is being uh, developed, but I didn't mean to digress from, from the Duly noted. All right, let's continue. Um, issue number four cited in the staff memorandum um, relates to uh, the bill's relationship to state and federal law. An, an amendment was requested um, to uh, expressly state that the provisions of the bill um, shall not be construed so as to unlawfully interfere with the gas utilities company's mercury service, or excuse me, can't read today, regulator replacement program as filed with a federal or state agency of competent jurisdiction. Um, I think that, you know, this has been requested by AOBA and Washington Gas, and obviously we have Mr. Caldwell here could speak to it, but I think the idea is that, you know, the, that these companies wanted to be crystal clear that, or, and well, AOB as an organization wanted to be crystal clear that, look, it's not, um, it's not the case that we could construe this law to be inconsistent with the PSC order. Um, I think we, you know, in, in reviewing the bill had determined it's not inconsistent. And also, you know, I think it, I believe that it goes without stating in the code explicitly that, you know, we, 
our law has to comply with state and federal law. It needs to be consistent. It can't, you know, it's pre, it, it would be preempted to the extent that it's uh, conflicts with the state or federal law. So I would suggest that this language is not necessary. So that's the kind of the staff position. Obviously, it's up to uh, the committee of how to handle it. I, I agree with your analysis there. Any, uh, well, yeah, I, I just, I agree. I think, I don't think it's necessary and not the intent of the bill and also just already covered. So, uh, Andrew, any comment? I see. Yeah, I mean, we put in, we put in unnecessary language all the time in bills as belts and suspenders. I mean, it's a pretty standard practice here. I usually argue, uh, you know, against it and usually kind of throw my hands up and say, you know, we don't really need it, but if everybody wants it, that's fine. Um, it seems odd to me that this would be like the one time when we're not doing it, but I don't feel strongly one way or the other. I mean, I, I would probably say we should just include it. I don't, I agree that it's probably not necessary. I also think that there probably hasn't been a bill that we've taken up in this uh, committee where we haven't included language that was seen as unnecessary, but made uh, some group or set of groups feel a little bit more right. comfortable because it was belts and suspenders and kind of reiterated right. what the existing rules and laws were, but I, I don't feel terribly strongly one way or the other. I wouldn't go so far as to say we always do it or often do it. And we often try hard to explain why it's not needed and hope that that is maybe, maybe Mr. Caldwell could at least explain why they think it is necessary and then we can decide. Happy to do that, but Chris, Chris Anderson wanted to comment, so I thought we could ask him first. I just had a, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you, the one thing I would be concerned about is that this law is, uh, meant to assist uh, Washington Gas in its efforts, but I would want to be clear that any failure of a landlord to provide the photograph or for DHCA to, I mean, we, we obviously make our best efforts to, to fulfill any and execute any law that's passed, but uh, there's always a possibility of something falling through the cracks. I would like to make it clear that any failure on the part of a landlord or DHCA to, to ad accurately collect this data uh, I want to make sure that doesn't give uh, Washington Gas any further reason to delay in, in what they're supposed to be doing. This um, They should be doing what they're supposed to be doing on a separate track. And this is, this is intended to assist them, but in no way should their efforts to alleviate the situation be dependent upon anything that we collect or any photographs that a, a landlord may or may not send. Okay. I'm not sure if it's necessary to make that clear, but I just, I, I did want to state that uh, I just, I, I wouldn't want to give them any further excuse to not perform. <laughs> well, you're sort of saying, you're, yeah, I mean, okay, if you want to get us some language, you're commenting on the meshing of this effort with the PSC's required survey, which Mr. Carwell has also mentioned. Um, you know, I, I think it would be very helpful if Washington Gas would send us right away what that survey is going to be, what the timing is going to be, when the results of that will be due, you know, and all of that information. I think it would help us with this legislation to understand, you know, the extent to which it is duplicative, um, you know, so we have not... I will communicate that to Washington Gas, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Please do. Um, you know, and, we... and with, with respect to the, to the last point, you know, I, I agree with the characterization. It is belt and suspenders, but it's, I think, the, the genesis, the basis is, you know, there could be a situation where you have competing obligations. I think that's unlikely, but, you know, Commission has moved forward with its plan, with, with its directives towards Washington Gas. Obviously, the commission and the council has taken the uh, uh, the bit by you know the, the bit and and is developing its its own set of uh, go forward requirements. And just in case there is some conflict, the idea would be that just to clarify that everybody knows up front that to the extent there's some inconsistency or conflict, uh, the commission's the commission's jurisdiction would control. But why do you think, uh, Christine, that it's potentially confusing? 
I, I thought that the, the length, the particular language um, that was proposed to me was. I see. Someone unclear. So, I think it words, could be rephrased. Um, and maybe it's just, is not out of the question, but if you could get us, if, if, if we could get some language that isn't as confusing, it might smooth the path. Yeah, and, and also support Chris's point too, you know, so yeah. I'm fine, I'd be fine right. with it. Yeah, I was just going to say, if we can incorporate Mr. Anderson's point, I, I think that's a really important piece, and that probably makes it a little bit less belts and suspenders and a little bit more, you know, to be very clear, you know, it should not be construed not to uh, unlawfully interfere, which, you know, it kind of places the burden on us yeah. and the well, landlord. We to do this. Which yeah. is not, yeah, yeah, it's the opposite. It's to say, you know, should not be uh, – uh, you know, uh, construed as interfering in any way with obligations as required by uh, a gas utility company's mercury regulator replacement program as filed with any federal state agency of competent jurisdiction. You know, something, I mean, I don't want to, but to me, it's it's nothing that we are doing here changes that obligation. That, that's what we mean by interfering here. And that would mean that the, well, the, burden on DHCA and on the landlords to Mr. Anderson's point, uh, you know, we're trying to help and, 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 you know, have some additional uh, level of accountability. It doesn't in any way change that Washington Gas has responsibilities, serious responsibilities that they have to take up with the PSC that won't change whether or not, you know, depending on how our efforts go forward. Okay. All right, then the final item is a technical correction. I'm sure everyone's okay with that. Okay, so here's how we should proceed. I think if you know, we, we need DHCA to do some additional work for us here, please. And um, you know, if you can get uh, recommendations to Christine, you know, pretty soon, I would imagine if you know, we'll, we'll ask Christine to work with you and. Take a look at everything and we'll receive what that is written if it all looks copacetic i think we have general agreement on all these likely points then an additional committee meeting could be very brief and it could be soon and, and if however uh you know somehow it seems like there's challenging issues that we yet haven't considered and need to work through then we'll have to book more time uh so in other words we can pretty easily add this to a committee agenda, you know, sooner rather than later and move it to the full council based on what we get, if it seems appropriate. Um, and then the other point I'd make to Mr. Caldwell, you know, if you could please again, yeah, you'll ask Washington Gas for that survey information and, um, you know, that will be relevant to the conversation and we'll see what that holds. I, you know, I think it's, I, I don't know what to say yet about it. You know, if it's something where they will be doing this, but it won't be done for quite some time, you know, then I would say we should move forward. If, if they have a, and I think there's value in the county having this information regardless, you know, because we have from history requirements that were not fulfilled. And so, you know, putting, what we're seeking to do with four, four to five hundred multifamily minimally, you know, it does not seem like a heavy lift for property owners or the county, and it does strengthen our ability to do some oversight. So it may be that even if we conclude that the survey looks great and we're, you know, we're enthusiastic about them completing it, we'd still want to proceed. I think we would still want to proceed gathering this information. I will follow up with Washington Gas. Thanks, sir. Okay, well, I thought this was going to be quick uh, and nothing ever is, but it was a good discussion. Um, thank you, everyone. We will move to the next item. And uh, again, thank you, DHCA. Thank you, Mr. Caldwell. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Now we are taking up the savings plan. Um, we have a, uh, a savings plan. Sorry, I'm going to need to go. Pull up the packet here. Vivian Yao is here to take us through the items 
actually we have several staff, um, the HCA Office of Ag Recreation, um, and uh, why don't we just walk through the packet and then uh, we'll proceed to the conversation. So, Vivian. Okay, so before you are the recommended round two savings plan for fiscal year 21, there are four items that the executive is recommending. Hopefully this will be a quick one in that all four items, um, council staff concurs with the executive. Um, the proposed reductions, there's one in the Office of Agriculture um, for contract savings related to services with MCPS. There are two recommended reductions in the Department of Recreation, along with the ones for uh, the Office of Agriculture. They, are, they result from COVID-19 impact on the department's ability to make services and facilities available. So those are totally COVID related. Um, the last one is with Department of Housing and Community Affairs, which is a reduction due to lapsing a vacant position. And again, because there are no anticipated service impacts for any of the rec recommended reductions, council staff recommends approval of each. We have folks from each of the departments available as well as staff um, council staff are uh, assigned to each of those departments in case the committee has any questions. All right, why don't we proceed through each? Council Member Joanna, do you have a question before we proceeded through each of these? Uh, no, I can, I can wait until I have one uh, particularly about the recreation, so I can we can hear from them and then at that point if I could jump in. Okay. All right. Gene. All right, so the first one we have is the Office of Agriculture. Um, I'm joined by Mr. Chris and Mr. Sheffel from the Office of Agriculture, if you have any questions. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. The county council approved the recommended savings in the first savings plan from July for this item. Um, this one is a recommended savings for the rest of the year at $25,292. This is for the uh, mobile um, lab that the Office of Ag contracts with uh, Montgomery County Public Schools. And clearly since um, there's still work with the Montgomery County Public Schools and getting students back into the classroom. Um, they're not going to execute that contract for fiscal 21. So the savings would occur naturally um, and council staff concurs with the executive. All right. That seems very straightforward. Uh, Mr. Chris, anything you want to say? And we welcome our special guest, Mr. Sheffel, <laughs> and young Ms. Sheffel. No, everything's fine. If, if there's any questions, uh, we can answer them, but Oh. <clears throat> Very good. Hello. Um, <laughs> great. Okay. Well, thank you. Couldn't be easier. Wish this program. Wish 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 that this program could operate. Obviously, but it can't. So. Right. I think we need young Miss Shuffle at more hearings, and they'll they'll go much more smoothly <laughs> moving forward. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Rumi. I'll also just note for the benefit of, of viewers um, that the count the Office of Ag and MCPS will execute this contract for fiscal twenty two. That it, it will it will run again once things get running again following the pandemic. It must be snack time. Uh, I'm getting a visitor too. Not right now, Big. All right. Um, uh, okay. I just I just have one too. That's that was my jerking head motion a minute ago. So yeah, I think <laughs> it's it's that hour of the day when you know. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Very good. Uh, no objection. Next next item, please. So uh, there's a. This is for the Department of Housing and Community Affairs. There's about a $14,000 savings that comes from continuing to lapse a vacant program position. Um, position has been vacant, so there really isn't any impact. It's a very small savings given the size of the department. So recommend approval. Okay. Sounds good. Any questions? Nope. All right. Thank you. Sorry, we should have done this first. I, I wish we had done this first. It would have enabled everyone to have a cleaner morning. My bad. Okay, and now rec. So for recreation, we have two items. One is a proposed reduction to youth development programming. Um, 
in the round one of savings plan, we actually did see some reductions related to delaying the launch of the new EBB and rec extra sites that were targeted for actually fiscal year 20. Um, this is continued savings related to, you know, the limited availability of facilities and options for delivering recreation programs. Having said that, I think the, the department has been working very hard to figure out what they can do with uh, what they have available. And so they have been working, they stood up two EBB after school programs, they expanded their Soccer for Change program, their Teen Works COVID Core program, and they are planning to expand to do more uh, outdoor activities in the third and fourth quarter. They also do have funding available should there be, you know, uh, additional indoor space available through MCPS, um, but that hasn't again happened uh, to date. Um, the second item is also department-wide seasonal funding savings. And again, because there's limited availability to open their facilities, they're, um, they've incurred a, um, a, a number of savings related to their seasonal staffing. And that's, so the total is 651,767 for the youth development program savings, and then 102,765 for the seasonal staffing savings. All right. Well, thank you. Um, and good to see you, Ms. Clutter, and thank you, Ms. Yao. So just to be clear, I think you answered this in the intro, Ms. Yao. This would not cut any of the programming, realizing we had actually also given, we had appropriated additional money for the therapeutic services through REC, through the collaboration guys. So this is not removing any of that. This is just realizing, for example, like that my daughter's not playing youth basketball. This is this, is this, is this, is that kind of what this is or related to, if you could just explain what 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 programming is embedded in there that's not happening and that we're not it's not the stuff that we've already passed money for and you have money for other outdoor stuff i think you said that that's my understanding but i'm going to pass it on to um uh recreation and omb staff to to respond absolutely this is uh adrian clutter from recreation um thank you for having me y yes we're um we're planning on ramping up in the spring and the summer um as the uh, the environment allows and safety precautions uh, considerations are taken, but this won't affect that. We this is just naturally savings that are happening as a result of COVID, and we are looking forward to um, to ramping up. And we've got um, we're hoping that we can uh, start some pilots and be in our buildings as as early as this month. Awesome. Well, thank you for all the work. Uh, you're a critical, always a critical component, but going to be even more as we try to adjust our kids and get them back into doing things. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. I'm glad to hear that this doesn't affect your ability to ramp up this spring and summer. I mean, that would be the, the question. If, if this in any way would mean you can't do as much as you otherwise could do in the spring, then I would say let's not take the cut. Um, so I am, I am hearing that that is not the case. And, uh, so I'm, I'm willing to accept it. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, thank you. I think we have no objection. Adrian, nice to see you. Um, look forward to hearing more about what you will be doing in the spring and summer. I don't know what, do we have any, can, can you give us a preview? Yes, yeah, sneak preview. So um, we're working uh, heavily on our youth sports initiative and um, actually we're meeting with about 30 providers this afternoon. So we're looking forward to delivering as many services as the as as we could possibly do, um, permitting space and of course the uh, health restrictions, and um, we, again, um, once again, camp planning is underway. So we're very optimistic and hopeful that we'll be able to provide um, many more youth development opportunities than the previous summer. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Vivian. All right. Without objection. Okay, well, that takes care of these items. So I think we can adjourn. Thank you, everybody. Good discussion. We'll see you for state legislation. All right, take care.